what's up guys we're gonna build beats and today we're gonna be making a pyrex type beat from scratch if you guys haven't subbed already the turn person is on make sure you do so because it helps out a lot so let's hop right into it real quick if you guys do not know fl is having a sale a black friday sale up until november 30th they're gonna have 50 percent off on the all plugins bundle and up to 82 percent off on upgrades so if you are interested in that the link will be in the description so let's get back to the video so the bpm I have a slower BPM, 113. Any BPM will work, but I think slower type uh, BPMs will work, okay? So I ain't pulling in no scale because I already know what I want and I'm gonna tell you why. I'm using the F sharp because that's my favorite key. Yours will be different, obviously. Harmonic minor, why are we using a harmonic minor? It's because we wanna keep, we wanna keep the emotion. We don't want no emotion, okay? We just wanna keep it dark, okay? Because when you use the minor, um, it tends to eventually start to sound melodic and emotional, and we don't want that for this style. We want it to sound dark and serious. So the harmonic minor is gonna help us with that. Now, you can skip through the video. I know people love to skip through the video, so I'm not telling nobody what plugins this is. I'm showing you all the sounds right now. So this is what I'm using. This is pretty much just a piano, okay? All right, sounds more like a bell, but that's why I named it ambient key or bell. This is needed, okay? This is needed. All right, you can substitute this out with any like a string, but this is needed. Now, a harp. All right, this is the instrument that I'm using. A harp is needed, okay? Do you have to use it? No, these two instruments are required. So something like this is required. This too is just flavor. All right, so we got mel melodic wind or string, okay? I'm giving you some flexibility here. So this is what I have, a whistle, okay? And then we got a flute, and I always use this flute. That's the sound, the sound selection, okay? And then we got trap drums. All right, and you'll hear those later. So let's go ahead and get into this melody. All right, so we're starting with the ambient key slash bell. It doesn't have to be a bell or a piano. It could be any instrument, but you probably want it to sound ambient. Throw some reverb or some delay on it to kind of dither it out so it's not so strong. You want it to kind of give a vibe. You don't want it to be annoying. So first thing we're gonna do is start on the root. This is very simple. Now we want these to be very short because we want to create bounce later. Let me pull these up a bit. So all you need to do is create one chord. That's it. That is all you need to do. Then we copy it over and then you look for, I guess you could say the half step, okay? And you just pull it down. Simple as that. Now we just copy this throughout the entire beat. That's not all though. So if you can do this, you're already done. You don't really need to be innovative or do anything else. You could literally make a beat with just this, okay? But I want to create some movement. So I don't know why it does that. It's kind of annoying. You take the bottom, okay? You skip this one and you go here. So you just make a chord backwards. Sounds a bit odd. It's going to sound odd at first. Just keep going. So holding shift, clicking and dragging. Okay, so we can copy everything over because we don't want to make super basic melodies. So what we want to do is add two notes. Okay, you don't, this is for variation. Okay, so um, if, if you're like, okay, I don't know what to add. Well, just add the root. Just go up and then put the root at the end. Innovation right there. There you go. All right, so this is what it would sound like. Now you like, oh, that's not, doesn't sound crazy. Okay, it's just, we're creating the vibe. Okay, it's not the melody, it's just the vibe. And if you wanna um, do extra, you could just do extra, just, let's see. Right, but this is all you need. You could literally copy this chord progression, save it in a folder, and guess what? You'll be good to go. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the harp. All right, so I would like to apologize ahead of time because you might have to use your brain on this part. Okay, so it's going to be on a roll and we have to copy and paste it. I know it's difficult. Okay, so you paste that. Let's delete this. So here's the part we have to use a brain. You have to go up here to snap the grid and you got to change it to one third beat. Yes, I know. I know. Now, what we have to do is highlight the top two notes and let me zoom in a little bit further. OK, so we're in a one third grid. So all you have to do is just move this back, highlight this, move this back. Oh, look, now we need a note to hit on the grid so we can create bounce when 808 hits. You could choose any note, but if you don't want to try, you just copy the root note and pull it up. Now, this is where people mess up. You're like, OK, I'll just do that here. No, let the beat breathe or let the melody breathe. OK, because if you keep doing this over and over, it's going to get muddy and no one's going to want to rap on it. So you delete this, delete this and do the same thing here. Just let the beat breathe a bit. Oh, wait, we have to use our brain again. OK, well, do you want to copy the same note? And I meant to put it up. You could do that or you could take this. But in my opinion, that is a huge range. So what I would do, take the second note, pull it up an octave. Well, would you look at that? All right, now pull. We got to mess with the velocity a bit. So I like to just ever so slightly just do something like this. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, you see how it's creating a vibe already. So do the same thing over here now. Except we only got three notes to work with. Well, you could do this actually, but let's just switch it up a bit since I already did it. All right. Our error is pretty much a happy accident at this point. So let's see. Let's take some of these notes and now we're using our. this is the part where we're using our brain a bit, right? Because so far all we did was just just use the same notes over again, right? Now we could try to create some variation. Let's keep this going, because like I said, we want that darkness. So let's just delete this and then let's let it breathe. And then let's do this again. And we can just pull this up and see how that sounds. All right. And this is all the thinking we've did. This and this is all the thinking we did this entire video. OK. We haven't even done anything yet. Just play it. All right. And then we just copy it over to match everything else. And we're good to go on the harp. OK, so now we're going to work on the melodic uh, instrument. Now, I just said wind or string because it just fits the style, right? Because people have people struggle with sound selection. So that's why I name things so that in your VST, you can kind of match up the instruments. All right. If you notice, if I do that in videos, that's why so that you can kind of match the sound selection. All right, so just because I'm using this VST doesn't mean you have to. As long as it's the same, to be honest, all these VST companies, they be sampling the same instruments anyway. I'm just said. So it don't really matter, okay? So just you could copy the instrument, but this could be a vocal, it could be a violin, it could be another piano, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be this exactly, but something melodic to add. So let's go ahead and go in here. All right, so this is a whistle, I believe. Yep. All right, so um, you could come here and copy notes. You could do this so we can keep that darkness, right? Because of those notes that are right next to each other to create that dark vibe. And then we could just mess with the rhythm and we're still in one third, right? That's important. And 
you don't have to do much. If you do a little each time, it'll in eventually build up to be something good. So. All right, so let's copy it over. Like I said, this is just to add a, it's not trying to take over the melody. It's just trying to add a little bit extra. All right, just some, some interesting to listen to it. Don't, it doesn't have to be the best melody in the entire universe. It could just be something simple, so. Copy this over and you can see I'm using the same exact notes. The literally I have not thought this. I've been talking to y'all this whole time. I have not thought about anything. I just been talking to y'all explaining. Oh, wait, look at this. This is the, the root. F is the root. So we good. You don't got to do anything, bro. You just follow your guidelines. OK, and then up here. You know what? I'm not even going to think on this. I'm going to just pull this up. And I bet it sound good too. Watch. See? It's simple as that. So those are the strings. You can use arcade for a vocal on this part if you want. Just make sure everything is in tune. Um, and this, I think this is even doing too much, to be honest. Um, but yeah, that's it for the melodic part. Now we're going to actually move on to the flute. All right, so now we're going to do the flute. Now I've shown multiple ways to do the flute in other videos. Now I'm going to show you a new way and that's with the harmony way. Okay. And it's pretty easy. Um, all you do is look at your chords. So usually I would say take a range and then you could go from, I guess in this case, we go F sharp to another F sharp. And then that's our range to work with. But in this case, we're going to use the harmony. Um, so I don't like starting at the beginning with my flute. I like offsetting it. So what you could do is copy your chords because at this moment, this tone is playing, right? Because technically all these notes together is one tone playing through this moment, right? So any of these notes we use will sound good. Most likely um, not every time, obviously. So we can copy this control C and put it to our flute. And then what you can do is you could try things out. Now, this may be a little too high, so I'm going to just stick to these. And yes, we are still in one thirds grid. I'm going to zoom in, make sure you can see everything. All right. And we can just offset things. And this is the fun part, because now you could just kind of experiment and try to find some cool little melody. Let's use this. Let's see how that sounds. Pull that out. Let me turn this up a bit so you can hear it. All right, and if you're right now, you're wondering, why did you put that there? Well, I just went up a note. It's nothing crazy I thought about. I just said in my head, I already use this note. I mean, we could try it. I mean, it doesn't sound bad, but I like the beat better. All right, so we can let it breathe and then maybe like an out part right here. And then let's pull, actually let's pull this in one more. Let's copy this over, delete this, and then we get creative now. Then we could take this note and maybe play with the legato. So if you have a flute in Omnisphere or any plugin, turn on the solo or glide or legato if it has a feature or just turn mono on so that it here, I'll just ex over exaggerate it so you can see what I mean. Right, so it kind of sounds a little bit more realistic. I kind of like that beginning, but I'm going to just keep it simple. I want to overdo things. Let's do something like, like this. Let's see. 
Okay. And then you could take patterns that you already have and you could copy it. So I'm gonna take this one, pull this here. And then maybe we can just offset this a bit. And then we can land back on that C sharp. Cause remember we took that C sharp off. Let's pull it back in. I kind of wanted to do a little bit extra. Let me see. If I can get it. To All right, I'm just leave it just like that. All right, so that's the flute. Again, just let it breathe a bit. So now we're gonna actually go and do the drum. All right, so let's go ahead and do the 808. And I like to turn off the instruments here and just keep one on. And then we're gonna put it on one half beat. So from here, um, it's pretty simple. You just kinda follow, and I'm gonna go up an octave. Right, and I remember what notes we used. Right, so I can just do this, but if we go back, you can see these are the notes you're pretty much gonna be using the whole time. All right, give or take um some, right? But for the most part, this is what we're gonna be using. Um, let's go back here. Let's do this first part first. You could put like a, a roll right here. Okay. So let's see what that sounds like. Right here. All right, let's move this over. And this will sound a lot better, obviously lower. So over here, what we could do, I'm gonna pull this one down an octave. And I just deleted this, cause I like when we have like a little, high, like not a high hat roll, like an 808 roll or something right here. I like to give it a little time, like offset it. So right here, let's put one right here. All right, and this is more of the creative side. You don't have to do the stuff I'm doing. This is just extra stuff. And then, let me see. All right, so let's listen to at least, let's listen to this a little bit. All right, so that's the 808. So now let's move on to the rest of the drums. All right, so now we're gonna do the drums and I went ahead and add the clap. I mean, if you don't know how to add a clap by now, then you really need to start working a little bit harder. So basically you just put it right here, okay, at this point. And then what I did is just went in and just pull the velocity up, okay? It's that simple, it's the same thing throughout the whole thing. All right, so now we're gonna do the hi-hats because the hi-hats is Another key thing to the style. So I'm gonna just go ahead and right click and fill each two steps. And then from here, we need to add hi-hat rolls. So we can add one maybe here. And then I like to switch it up between the thirds grid and the one and the regular grid. So And I usually turn these up a lot louder than the regular hi-hats. Let's go ahead and change back. 
and I'm kind of going slow on purpose because this stuff can get confusing to look at because there's so many notes at once. Then let's put one here, one here, and then we can. Actually, let's not do that. And then you could pan things, but I'm not going to do that. I just don't feel like it. But if you want to, you could pan some of these to make it sound a lot more interesting. And let's take this. All right, so the last part will be just copying it over. If we want to add other stuff, just because like, now I want to stress stress this is don't just because you see me doing something a certain way doesn't mean you can't do it another way, right? Because a lot of people, especially beginners, they watch somebody make a beat, right? And they start to think that's the only way to do it. It's not okay. This is just how I'm doing it for this video, okay? Um, so let's go to the open hat, and really you could just do this. For the open hat then maybe and then what i like to do with the open hats is just pull them down all right so those are the drums now the last thing we're going to do is an effect to make it sound more authentic so let's go ahead and do that all right, so I loaded up a few plugins and did a little bit of mixing and I'm gonna walk you through all this. Now, if you want this, if you want this to sound authentic, you don't need to pan or you don't need to do anything. And I'll show you why when we hit that master channel. But I just pan my flute to the right and my harp. I probably should actually pull these in. Nah, it's not that serious. All right, but this is the harp. I panned it to the left. Do I need to do this? Not really. But it's just out of habit. I just do it by default and I just pull the flute down a bit because I'm um, of this plugin. Okay. Now, this is the plugin I'm using. All right. It does give a cool effect. I'll admit that. But like I always say, just because I'm using a plugin does not mean you need to buy it or get it. All right. That's a problem with YouTube is you make people impulse buy when you use stuff, right? Because I know 10 people probably went to search this up right now as they're watching this video it's a cool plugin but i'm not saying bad just because i'm using it because i only used this three times okay in the past two years this time and then one in like two videos all right so this is what it sounds like it does sound good I'll admit. all right and it just gives us some character now, usually I would just put an RC20 or isotope vinyl and just give it that like wobble effect. OK. Now, moving on, we got this whistle. I just added some delay. Eight, I put it on eight and I'll turn this feedback down. Right. It doesn't really matter as long as it's below like 10. It should be good. And that's to add bounce as you can just you just heard it adds little bounce and that's pretty much it for this like i said they're not needed it's just some character it gives you something different now this is the most important part this is quote unquote the sauce all right now look now a lot of y'all be like how do you get this because i get messages people saying how do you get this sound it sounds very nice it sounds super punchy all right i'm gonna show you how to do that you get the soft clipper and this is the setting you want. I'm going to zoom in for you. You turn the threshold to around 18. That's the sweet spot. If you want to go crazy, you can turn all the way down. But around 18 is the sweet spot. Now, if you want it to hit hard, you want to turn the post gain up. If you want it to hit below, what is it? 0.3 dB, you put it at 79%. But you can pull it up. I just leave it around there. 
and then it'll give you that like gritty sound i guess or saturated sound <laughs> And like I said earlier, you don't even need these instruments. You could just take these off and it still sound good. All right, so that's it. That's how you make a Pyrex um, type beat. Um, but that's going to be it. Um, make sure you guys like and subscribe if you are new. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.